All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Abinawa Yahweh by Shema Shakyawashai, which is the Most High in the name of His Son. Peace and blessings through the Holy Spirit to all the 12 tribes scattered abroad and all the Gentiles in the faith. Peace and, and, and blessings, man. So today I want to say uh, double honor to all the elders too as well in the Father and the Son. Yeah, man, so today... I'm going to be going into 1 Corinthians. I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Beloved Ones. And this is dealing with um, the beloved Paul, a disciple of the Messiah, giving out uh, basically advice to brothers and sisters, man. So this is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, man. All right, so let's see what's going on here, man. Let some uh, references, man. Why is Paul saying that uh, it is good for a man not to touch a woman? What are you talking about? Right? One second. Right, when he say it's good for a man not to touch a woman, this is talking about fornication, adultery. Don't be going out and touching other man's women, man. I just seen a video actually on uh, on the Facebook this morning where Jake used his car on a woman, and the woman uh basically told Jake she got a dude, hopped in a dude whip, man, and uh, Jake basically convinced her to uh, have sex with her, man. I mean, to have sex with him, Salakia. Jake convinced her to have sex with him, man. And uh, this woman was talking crazy, talking uh, some nasty stuff, man, which is pretty crazy, man. That's why the scripture says it is good for a man not to touch a woman. What type of woman in that, is that talking about? A woman that is uh, adulterous. Okay, this is uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 29. Proverbs 6 and 29. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. So that's why Paul said it's good for a man not to touch a woman, right? Because you got to find out if these women are single or not, man. Some of these women will lie to you and tell you they're single when they're not. And then there's women that will tell you that they're not single and still will slime you out. Then there's righteous women that uh, tell you they're single and they're telling the truth. So you just got to use discernment, beloved ones, and do your due diligence, man. So like the beloved said, now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Why? Because of adultery. Okay? That's why he's saying this, man. Okay? We have uh, Genesis 20 and 6. And God said unto him in a dream, Yeah, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. See, that's showing you the most high is in control too, man. That just totally, utterly destroys free will as well on the side note. He said, I suffered thee not to touch her, man. So the most high put the spirit on, uh, who is this referring to? Uh, Abimelech, right? He came to him in a dream and told him he suffered him not to touch her. Referring to, uh, right? Abraham's, uh, wife. This guy wanted her, man. Right? Let's see if I can, uh, go up a little bit. Yep, so that's that's why Paul said it's good for a man not to touch a woman, you know. And the guy Abimelech, uh, he wanted to touch Sarah, but the Most High let him touch her. Okay, that's a good thing right there. You see that? So Paul ain't going off, man. No, nah, brother, I just read Paul. He said it ain't good to touch a woman, so I should be a homosexual. 
You know, it see that's where brothers twist the beloved one, Paul, man. You guys don't have the spirit of discernment, man. The beloved one says the scriptures are spiritually discerned, man. So when he said it's not is is uh it's good for a man not to touch a woman, that's talking about committing adultery. We just read in Genesis twenty and six where the most high told Abimelech, I suffer thee not to touch her. Right? Then we read Proverbs six and twenty nine. That talk about he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. That's that's not a good thing. So it's good thing not to touch a woman, right? Unless you uh, find out she's single and it's lawful for you to marry her, man. All right? This is 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7 verse 1 again. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, right? Nevertheless, beloved ones, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, man. So that means every brother should at least be able to have one wife if it's ordained for you to have a wife because the Most High also adorn people to be eunuchs, right? And you don't know if the Most High did that to you or not. Unless the Most High show you your destiny, man, and you know it's for you. But there are brothers and sisters that will be single. And there's brothers and sisters that will be in relationships, man. All right? But like the beloved one said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. What is fornication? That in the Greek is porneia. is where we get the, the word porn from, right? So porn back in the ancient world, you couldn't go get on Pornhub or any of those porn videos and all that and other nonsense. You couldn't go uh, just watch a porno back then. So back in the days, they would have to deal with unlawful sex with people or animals, which comes from the Greek word porneia, which is fornication. All right? Let's go to... Uh which fornication can be uh, spiritual and physical. But we're dealing with physical fornication. This is dealing with the fleshly fornication, not the spiritual one, right? The spiritual fornication would be cheating on God with another God. But the spirit, the fleshly fornication is um, having unlawful sex, right? We have Matthew 5 and 32, but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving the cause of fornication. This word for fornication is porneia, which meaning uh, unlawful sex. So if your woman ain't have unlawful sex, you're not supposed to be breaking up with your woman. That's the Mashiach, right? So we shouldn't be getting into relationships with people we don't have attentions on being with forever, man. Stop giving up the draw so quickly, beloved ones. Right? Take your time and get to know do you really want to be with that person forever. Okay? Control your members. Call, uh, it says, uh, saving the cause of fornication, causing her to commit adultery. Right? So if you break up with a woman and she ain't committing no fornication and you leave her, that means you're putting that woman in a position to be an adult, to commit adultery, man. That's totally wickedness on the man's behalf. And this is right here in the, in the New Covenant, man. So you can't just be uh, uh, having sex with women and then breaking up with them, man. And they ain't even cheat on you. I know a lot of jakes that are sliming these women out terribly, beloved ones. They're having sex with them, and then they don't want to be with them. Then you realize you don't want them after you didn't have sex with them. It's terrible. And uh, it's wickedness, man. Get to know these uh, women, sisters, get to know these men before you give up the draws, right? See if he's a total one. See if he's really a beloved one before you you uh, give up that special thing, man. Because sex is a sacred thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a it's a it's a pleasurable thing that the Most High God created, right? Did not uh, Solomon said the pleasure that came with sleep, uh, the uh, pleasure that come with sleep, right? So it's a good thing. To, uh, for a man and a woman to become one, right?
right? But not with the intentions on uh, working things out and sticking it out and staying together and being faithful together. Not breaking up with each other, man. So let's keep it going, right? And it says, cause her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery, right? So uh, it's adultery when you marry a divorced woman, which that's why the scripture says, uh, uh, sinful and adulterous generation seeketh the sign. There should be no sign given to it, man. The sign of Jonah, man, because uh, Israel have become adulterers. Our people broke the old covenant spiritually and uh, physically just having sex with women and not being with them and women having sex with men, but then you don't have a relationship with them and you're not in love with them and it's just sex. You know, you're, you're, you're fusing your bodies with people you don't even you don't even love. So why would you want somebody to be a part of you that you don't even love? It's total confusion. We must repent. Right? So uh, we have uh, some more scriptures. Let's keep going down. Let's get some more. Because the, uh, the word for fornication is porneia. Right? He says, so nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Right? You can get to a wife, man. That's what Paul is saying. Let every man, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. So every man to avoid porn, porn and unlawful sex, you should be able to go get you a wife, man. This is from the beloved one, Paul. Let every woman have her own husband. So every woman should be able to have a husband. If it is ordained of God, man. Right? But some people also, they have faith that they can't find a man. Or they have faith that they can't find a woman. And they manifest that into their reality. And it, and it becomes true. Because you believe those things. And the scripture says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So when you think that you can't find a man, you're not going to find a man with that type of vibration. And if you think that you can't find a woman, you don't believe. How are you going to please God? You ain't got no damn faith. It's, it's a wrap, little buddy. <laughs> okay? Or, or if you're in the spirit that all women are, are evil or all women are whores, guess what? It's going to manifest into your reality. Right? But if you believe in your spirit that there's a few rubies left, hey, man, you'll find them, man. Seeking ye shall find. Knocking it shall be open unto you. All right? So, uh, as a man thinketh, so is he, man. You know, <clears throat> let's keep it going. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse uh, 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Mm -hmm. So, you can't be doing your husband dirty and don't want to make love to your husband, or you don't want to make love to your wife. That's not, that's not right, okay? Some some beloveds get in relationships and they in uh you know the husband and wife don't want to make love to each other, man. And leave the other one uh you know uh dried out, man. That's not that's not lawful, man. Let's get the word bene bene benevolence. Strong's G twenty one thirty three. You know ya. You know ya. You know ya. Right, which is dealing with benevolence, goodwill, right, kindness, con con conjugal duty, can uh, conjugal duty, right? So you gotta have good good intentions, man, and goodwill, benevolence, can conjugal uh, duty. I'm saying that word right. Let me get that in the English and see what that word uh conjugal conjugal it's like yeah, conjugal duty. Which that's talking about your marriage duty. Okay? Which is your duty to please your husband and it's your duty to please your wife, man. Okay. That is your marriage duty. 
Okay, now you might not feel like doing things all the time, but you have to come to an agreement and, and make each other happy, man. Right? Relating to marriage or the relationship of a married couple. Right? Let's keep it. Let's keep it small. Okay, for a uh, conjugal duty, for the wife does not rule over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not rule over his own body, but his wife does. So, man, you got to give it to each other, man, and stop playing games, man. Okay, when it's time, the duty to be available to one spouse for sexual intercourse. You, uh, you, mystic, I don't know if I said that right. So it was talking about being available for sexual intercourse with your husband or wife, man. Don't be acting like, uh, act like you're so busy, like you can't make time for each other, man. Okay, stop doing that, man. But we didn't, didn't want to do all the other little lame and boring things, right? You got to make love to your husband, make love to your wife, man. And also do other things, man. But uh, becoming one, that's part of marriage, man. What did the Most High tell Adam and Eve, man? He said, you two shall become one, man. That happens when you have sex with someone. My beloved one, uh... Caleb just did a video about that as well, about when you have sex with a woman, she becomes you. So you women have to uh, make sure you want to become that person before you let him enter inside you, okay? So let's keep it going. The wife have not power over her own body, right? That's, that, that's for the beloved one, man. <laughs> that's for daddy, okay? Okay. <laughs> Right? So, when you're in a relationship with, with your husband or wife, man, right? In this case, uh, the wife in a relationship with her husband, right? She has to uh, make her husband happy, man. Right? And let them become one. But the husband, right? And the likewise, also the husband have not power over his own body, but the wife. So, if the wife want to wanna become one with her husband and, uh, you know, uh, lay up or whatever it is, man. You got to do it, man. Right? If your wife want to get it in, you got to get it in, man. Right? For the most part. Now, all, now, every time you might not be able to get it in. Right? You might have to, you know, do certain things, go to work and, and uh, you know, have various things you might need to do or accomplish. But you got to make time for each other as well. Okay? But the husband, and likewise also the husband, have not power over his own body, man. So you can't be on semen retention for the whole for the whole marriage, man. You can't be on semen retention for the whole marriage. That right there shows you, man. The husband have not power over his own body, man. <laughs> no, babe. I want to do semen retention for, for, for 30 years. <laughs> Just playing. But uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta uh, you know. You, you got to uh, give each other your marriage duties, man. That's in the law as well, which I'm not going to get the actual definition, but it's in there, man. It says defraud not one another. Yes, man. So don't be robbing each other of uh, your sexual uh, pleasures, man, and love, man. That's a part of your duty, man. You can't get in a relationship and then don't want a brother... To not have another woman or nothing like that, but then you don't want to get a brother no no sex. You don't want to spend time with the brother. You don't want to read the new covenant and the laws with the brother. Can't be doing that, man. That's off. <laughs> the fraud ye one not not the fraud ye not one other, right? Or you don't want to give uh, spend time with your woman. You know you don't want to uh, please her when she's uh, hot in the pants, right? And she wants to have a good time, right? But you want to go kick it with uh, some whirly jakes, man, That that's on some nonsense trying to get you in trouble. You're supposed to be t spending time with, with your woman, making your wife happy, like it says in the thought of the, uh, in the law. The fraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. So, right, and if you're not going to... Uh, have sex with each other, 
it's supposed to be with consent. Y'all supposed to agree to not have sex, right? Not just one person and uh y'all not agreeing. That's not a, that's not being one. Right? The fraud you not the other except it be for consent for a time, right? You give yourself a little time to uh, you know, uh what's that word I'm looking at? Rejuvenate, man. All right? You can't be getting it in so much to where you ain't handling your business as well. Right? Because there's some people that want to have, have so much sex that they don't even want to uh, make a living for themselves, which is total folly. A woman not going to respect that unless she's uh, low vibe. Right? So let's keep it going. Right? Uh, defraud ye not one another except to be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fast and prayer and come together again. Right? Then you come together again and now you're tender and... Uh, you know, you're ready to be intimate with each other, man. Right? Because you haven't been uh, doing it as much. So, yes, it is a good thing to take a break and be on a retention and give yourself a break from sexual pleasures and sex. Right? Give yourself a break when you and your wifey. You ain't got to have sex every day. Right? You can go... Like a week, you know, you go two weeks, three weeks, a month, however long you, you and your wife agree to to go on to like, well, we're not going to have sex right now. We're just going to work out, you know, eat, eat, eat a, you know, uh, a good diet, drink plenty of water. And we're going to focus on, um, you know, having an inheritance for our, our children. That's a good thing to do, right? So... You know, you can't be uh, bugging out, man. It says uh, that you come together again, right? Now, y'all got free time to have, uh, you know, sexual intercourse and and, and and do benevolence, man. With your wife, a husband and a wife, man. Having a good time, getting it in, man. You know, you might get some wine with your wife and, you know, y'all get it in, man. And y'all do y'all thing. You know, watch some movies and uh, have a good time, man. Right, and that you come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. So y'all gotta be able to be consistent with agreeing on how y'all gonna do things in your relationship. But I speak this by permission and not a commandment, man. So Paul was giving advice, man, on what brothers should do. They should go uh, get a wife to avoid fornication, but don't touch a woman, right? If she's married. Right? Like the most high supper of Abimelech to not touch Sarah. And how the most high uh said through Solomon that uh whoever touches a wicked uh, a woman that has a, a husband, you should not be innocent. So that's why I said it's good to not touch a woman because you want to be innocent in finding a, a a righteous woman, man. You know, basically according to the law, a virgin. Which, uh, that's why, yeah, I wish I said, uh, 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 daughter's generation, because most of our women are not virgins, man, because Jake is out here having sex with women and, uh, dipping out on them. And women are out here having sex with guys and, 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 and minions, having sex with minions and don't even want to be with them, man. So it's total confusion going on. So let's keep it going. But I speak this by permission and not a commandment. For I would that all men were even as myself, right? Being able to focus, you know what I'm saying? And have control. But every man have his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, right? If you don't have a husband or or a wife, man, right? You, you are right, man. Okay, it is good for them if they buy it or not. Why he says it good? So they don't deal with somebody that's uh, an adulterer or a fornicator, right? But if they cannot contain, let them marry, right? So if you so damn uh, horny and you can't contain yourself, you need to go become one with somebody that you're going to love and cherish and be with for the rest of your life, right? Don't be having those one-night stands and letting letting Jake get the quickie, man. 
You know, Jay, get the the quickie and get up through, man. And then go home, eat a bag of chips and eat a sandwich and go watch, uh, you know, NBA highlights, man. <laughs> All right. Or letting, uh, you know, Ebony come through, get a quickie. And, uh, you know, she leave after that. Next thing you know, she's, uh, you know, at the nail shop getting her nails done, man. Stop it. Right? <clears throat> Let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn, right?